Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Israel Brief, brought to you by Lay of the Land, and I'm your host, Wendy Marks. And every day, or rather Monday to Thursday, we look at some of the big news headlines, make or some of the big stories, rather, that are making the news headlines in Israel. And uh, the big story today is the fact that both Israel and Iran will be joining a Russian-led free trade zone known as the Eurasian Economic Union. So while it looks likely that Israel is set to join, Iran is still in talks to join this agreement. However, uh, it's unlikely because of the fact that each country has to sign the agreement independently that Jerusalem and Tehran will be entering into any kind of free trade agreement together. I mean, it's highly unlikely that this is ever going to happen because Israel and Iran are mortal enemies at the moment with the Islamic Republic threatening the destruction of the state of Israel. In fact, last night, Prime Minister Netanyahu actually said to Iran that if they continue to threaten uh, Israel with annihilation, yesterday's anniversary of 40 years since the Iranian revolution would be the last anniversary that they celebrate. So uh, those are fighting words indeed, and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not one to take a, uh, a quiet approach to threats made by Iran. And it comes at a time where we see growing encroachment from Iran into Syria to try and gain more access or to try and get closer to the border with Israel. And uh, we can't forget that Iran is also the chief sponsor of uh, terrorism, sponsoring their proxies, Hamas, in the Gaza Strip and Hezbollah in Lebanon. Now, looking further afield, yesterday we spoke about the fact that uh, American Congresswoman Ilan Omar tweeted out a horrendous anti-Semitic tweet where she basically accused uh, Jewish money, or rather APEC, of uh, buying influence of the U.S. in, uh, or, uh, or rather of Jews, in U.S. foreign policy towards Israel. And this is a, a horrendous, horrendous stereotype that is along, you know, with the protocols of the elders of Zion that claim that Jews control the world or, or, or Jews have um, incredible economic influence. And uh, after she caused an, an outrage, including a reprimand from the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Ilan Omar has apologized. However, many of us feel that somebody who holds the privilege of office like she does should not be allowed to continue. This is not the first time she has made anti-Semitic comments. And uh, uh, in her apology, while she said, you know, she's, she's learning from her Jewish friends and didn't want to uh, uh, offend anybody else, she did, however, draw a parallel between APEC and other lobbying groups like the Fossil Fuel Group and the NRA, the National Rifle Association, and claiming that they have the financials to have influence. So uh, I am personally of the opinion that she she should not be allowed to hold this kind of office because America and Israel share the same values of democracy, of respect, of human rights. And uh, this is not going to fly well. And also, uh, Ms. Ilan, we, uh, or Ms. Omar, sorry, when you are endorsed by the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, David Duke, we think that if it Ku Klux like a Klan, you might just be a racist. Now, coming back to home, yesterday we spoke about the fact that the centre-left party, the Labour Party, would be holding their primaries, and the results are in, and it could be that uh, a party that yesterday we said, you know, may not have uh, uh, much left of it, could have been given a new lease on life, and uh, after the, uh, uh, after its leader, Avi Kabar, holding the number one spot on the list, 
it is he is followed by Itzik Shmuli and Staf Shafir, who are young activists and they are very very well known here in Israel for leading the 2011 Cottage Revolution, which started as humble protest in Tel Aviv against rising rent prices. So um, veteran activists, they, but uh, will they be representing Labour in the Knesset? Well. Only time and votes will tell and you can uh, join the rest of us on the 9th of April as we watch very, very carefully how the Israeli electorate are voting. It's going to be an exciting election with new parties, with big changes and uh, it's anyone's guess who's going to win. But uh, uh, that's today's edition of the Israel Brief brought to you by Lay of the Land. And don't forget to check out our content and you can find us at www.layoftheland.online. That's www.layoftheland.online. Like and follow us on Facebook at Lotl Site, which is at L-O-T-L. S-I-T-E. We should take you straight to our Lay of the Land Facebook page. And um, you can subscribe as well to receive your daily edition of the Israel Brief by clicking on the subscribe button below or on the little bell icon to the side. I'm Raleigh Marks. This is the Israel Brief and we'll chat again tomorrow.